Freshman from Rancho Cucamonga, California, number two, Caleb Smith. At guard, the six foot red shirt, freshman from Inglewood, California, number 24, Barrington Hargress. At guard, a 6'1 red shirt sophomore from Anchorage, Alaska, number three, Isaiah Moses. And at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from El Mirage, Arizona, number 11, Nate Pickens. The head coach for the Highlanders is Mike Magpayo. a graduate student from Cary, North Carolina, number one, Justin McCoy. At forward, a 6'9 senior from Rio das Ostras, Brazil, number five, Bernardo da Silva. At guard, a 6'5 junior from Melbourne, Australia, number 22, Ryan Rapp. At guard, a 5'10 senior from Vallejo, California, number 3, Jovan McClanahan. And at guard, a 6'2 senior from Leopoldsburg, Belgium, number 4, Noel Coleman. The head coach for the Rainbow Warriors is Aaron Gannat. Is when it counts. Conference play where the foes are familiar, the surprises are few, and postseason seeding hangs on every final result. And four games into Big West action, Hawaii finds itself sliding down the precipice, turning a January matchup at home with UC Riverside critical. The Highlanders are young and hungry. The Rainbow Warriors desperately need a win. Live from Manoa, it's Saturday night. We welcome you inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Next to Artie Wilson, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Artie, take us through the Kaiser Permanente. Keys to the game. For Riverside, Mike Mapayo said they have to contain at least one and a half. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, the Silva, Coleman, and McClanahan, all three can't have great ball games. Maybe one, maybe one and a half, but not all three. For the Rainbow Warriors, they have to take control of all aspects of this basketball game. It's time for the real Rainbow Warrior team to stand up and be counted. It needs to start tonight. Hawaii well, nine and seven overall, one and three in the Big West Conference. They have lost six of their last eight, including four straight home losses for the first time since 2010. On the other side, UC Riverside, they're seven and 10 overall, two and three in league. Coming off of a 71-56 home victory over Cal Poly Thursday, but 0-8 this year in true road game. The tip is up, and it will be the Highlanders controlling. This will be a dog fight. I have a sense of it. It's uh, the, the Riverside doesn't. They don't understand. You got a whistle against. Riverside, they're going to say that the recipient of the pass on the wing, Nate Pickens, was out of bounds. The Hawaiian Financial FC starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. You'll notice Ryan Rapp back in there for the fifth straight game. 
the 6'5 junior from Melbourne, Australia, and here he is driving down the lane and looking to be aggressive early. Bernardo Da Silva cleans up the spill, and Da Silva, who's coming off of a strong performance, 17 points, a career-high 14 rebounds on 7 of 9 shooting in the loss, albeit against UC Irvine. Uh, he gets to work quickly here. That's a great move by Da Silva, a rebound and a putback, so he's starting like he's in the, the last ball game. Here's Caleb Smith. A series of move, up and under doesn't go. Second time was a charm though. Caleb Smith, who's averaging only five and a half points per game overall on the season, but scored 14 points, added nine rebounds against Cal Poly a couple of nights ago. He's averaging 10 points, five and a half boards over his last six games. He's a freshman. Here's Noel Coleman. Went scoreless the other night, was 0 for 6 from the field. Javon McClanahan able to tap away the would-be outlet pass, and then maneuvers his way to the bucket. Good, strong move by uh, McClanahan, and I like the fact that Noel, Noel came out firing the shot. And Kerman, his second game this season already where he went scoreless, also did not score a point against Georgia Tech in yeah. the Diamond Head Classic. Hard to imagine that the guy who can score as easy as he does the team's leading scorer still, despite those two efforts, as Barrington Hargress, he's the second leading scorer for Riverside, unable to hit the contested shot. So here's Jovan, the turnaround. Tough shot, but he twirls it in. Jovan has come out with a purpose, an absolute purpose. Averaging 13 points per game in Big West play, was two for 12 against the Anteaters for just four points the other night. And Justin McCoy playing free safety. Cockroaches that pass. And Hawaii will get into a set. Extra pass, it's Coleman. Deep in the lane, kicks it out. Jovan off the dribble, splashes it. You like that aggressive play by Jovan. Nice assist by Noel Coleman. Right now the Rainbow Warriors are playing with purpose. And a 6-0 burst here for the Bows. And McClanahan, three for three, for six points. Here's the drive by Isaiah Moses, and Bernardo Da Silva says, get it out. Three ball, Caleb Smith, and that rattles home. So Caleb Smith has five points. And Hawaii leads by three. It's almost a Javon against Caleb <laughs> ball game thus far. Just clear everybody else out. Let's just do it the old uh, driveway one-on-one -on -one method. As that ball was poked away, and Riverside comes out of there with it. Isaiah Moses, Juco All-American last year at College of Southern Idaho, team's leading scorer, 13 points per. Also averages almost five assists, and here he is stepping into a three. These two teams will attempt a lot of threes. In fact, Riverside tops in the Big West Conference and attempted threes. Number two on that list, Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Now, whether or not they make them, that's well, been a little more questionable here as of late. In there in this weekend, Hawaii had made the most at eight at the game. McCoy, tough like, shot. Like the physical play by McCoy, like the fact the officials are allowing them to play through a little contact. Everybody likes that if you're a player. And McCoy dropping just under 11 per game. And Ryan Rapp disrupting the drive by Nate Pickens, but not without picking up the foul. So one segment in Hawaii, five of seven from the field. They lead 10-5. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum Sports, sponsored by your Hawaii Honda dealers. What's better than a cheesy bite? Cheese in every bite. That's why we invented stuffed crust pizza. Topped and stuffed with almost a pound of cheese. There's only one original. The original stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. I got me a paradise. Your paradise too. It's a party. Every time you're in a Honda Civic, a Ford, or HRV. So grab your whole aloha. Hit play on Apple Music and get the Paina started in style. In a new Honda, the perfect island ride. Special lease and finance offers are going on now. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. Tell them Henry said you. Keeping Hawaii student athletes in top shape starts with protecting their teeth. 
That's why Hawaii Dental Service encourages student athletes to use mouth guards to prevent or reduce the impact of an injury. Mouth guards are not just for football players, but can help protect all sports athletes. Custom fit mouth guards can lessen the impact of a sports injury to the head, protecting the mouth, jaw, and face. Parents, encourage your student athletes to ask their coach or school's athletic director about using a mouth guard so they can live well and smile more with HDS. What's better than a cheesy bite? Cheese in every bite. That's why we invented stuffed crust pizza, topped and stuffed with almost a pound of cheese. There's only one original. The original stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Don't miss a second of the action. Watch Spectrum Sports on the go. The Spectrum News app has the local sports you love and the news and weather that matter most to you. You can download today on the App Store or Google Play. Well, what do you think about the way Hawaii has come out here? A little over four minutes into this one, Artie. Remember the Kaiser key, take control. And that would, that's what Hawaii has done. They've come out with purpose. They've come out on a mission. And the leaders of the team thus far, McClanahan and De Silva, are making things happen. Noel Coleman has got to come alive. McCoy is playing well, and Rapp is being the, the kind of the plug-in guy. He just kind of fills in wherever necessary. But thus far, the first four minutes, I like the effort of the Rainbow Warriors. Yeah, Hawaii, five of seven. They've only attempted one three, but Jovan McClanahan, six points on three for three shooting. As we come out of the timeout, free throws for Nate Pickens, the 6'3 sophomore from El Mirage, Arizona. In his second year with Riverside, averaged two points in 30 games off the bench last year. He's dropping them in at about seven points per game this season. Tom Beatty, first off the bench for Hawaii. The freshman from Auckland, New Zealand. He replaces Rapp in the lineup. And some extended pressure here from Riverside. Surprise the Rainbow Warriors there for a moment. You see Riverside coming off of a 22 win season a year ago. It was a Division I program record for single season victories. But they lost a bunch from really, that team. They really did. And basically starting with a brand new backcourt here this year and a backcourt of a couple of guys who did not previously play Division I basketball. As you take a look at Mike Magpio in his fourth season atop this program. Was named the interim back in 2021. The interim tag got removed, and he's done a pretty darn good job over there. Yeah, he really has. Does he remind you, he reminded me just then when I looked at him, of Vince Gu. Huh. A little bit of the way the mannerisms where he would stand, the way Vince would walk around. And okay. Are you feeling it? Yeah, the hands on the hips yeah, a little yeah. bit. All right. And you know, you guys are like kindred spirits because uh, oh, Mike yeah. Magpio is... Uh, a success on and off the court. He was the CEO of a multi-million dollar real estate uh, business and firm in Southern California, but the, the coaching industry continued to draw and call at him, uh, much like uh, the guy I'm working this broadcast yeah, with. Maybe, maybe, there's, maybe there's a chance, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it would be the old, old man's league, but that's okay. You never give up in your dreams. There you go, there you go. Bernardo Da Silva knocking down both free throws. It's Hawaii by six. And then Nate Pickens gets in a tug of war. And a tie-up is called. Possession arrow sends it the other way. So Hawaii stout defensively on that occasion. Great job. Good help by Bernardo Da Silva. And they gave Bernardo <laughs> the benefit of the doubt on that play. The officiating crew, Daryl Gelinas, Johnny Harrington, and Jeff Wooten. Through the other night allowed for some physicality. And it appears as though that's more or less going to be the established tone here in this game as well. Cross court pass goes off of McCoy and out of bounds. Second turnover for Hawaii. Yeah, I thought that pass was going to Javon McClanahan, who had cut down the middle of the lane. Ron Gannat in his ninth season. You could see the frustration in his expression in the post-game press conference after Hawaii lost to Irvine, fourth straight home loss. Uh, you could tell he's searching for answers here and still feels convinced and believes that this team is going to turn a corner. Uh, when that will happen, that remains to be seen. Hawaii has made four straight field goals. That last bucket by Pickens cuts the difference down to four. 
10 seconds to shoot. Coleman lines it up and can't hit. That was a good look, though. Rebound by Jalon Martinez. A big body, 6'11", about 250, 260 pounds. Actually dropped 40 pounds in the offseason. And a nice spring up jumper there by Hargress, six foot red shirt freshman from Inglewood, California. Red shirted last year, but got to practice every day against Zion Pullen, Flynn Cameron, just a couple of the names no longer there for Riverside. He's gotten, uh, he's gotten much better and he's doing a nice job this year for Riverside. I saw them play UCLA on television and they battled UCLA and had the game won and then lost it at the end. Clanahan, that one bounces out. Yeah, actually had the lead in the final yeah. minute on the road against UCLA. It was unbelievable. I started getting a little worried for the Rainbow Warriors when I watched that game. Riverside hit 14 threes in that game. And it was Hargress who was going bananas for a good portion of that. Kyle Owens also had 18 points, nine rebounds in that one. Isaiah Moses, he hit five threes, but he walks where they make that Caleb Smith who walks with it right there to turn it over back to Hawaii. Juan Munoz now checking into the game. 24 points away from reaching 1,000 for his combined career. More sec also sent out onto the deck. Sec picking up a couple of quick fouls early against Irvine and that hindered his playing time for sure. See if he can stay on the floor for an extended period in this one. Here's McCoy driving baseline. Runs into all kinds of impediments. McClanahan, nifty dribble, pass deflected, gets to McCoy, five seconds to shoot. Goes up with the left, draws nothing. The save by Sec goes right to Barrington Hargress. And Riverside a chance to tie or take the lead here. Three ball is up and does not draw anything out of the palm of Kyle Owens. Another guy who hit five threes in that loss at UCLA, but was not calibrated correctly on that offering. And so last to touch it out of bounds, however, was Hawaii. Okay, here we go. Noel Coleman brought back in the ball game after a 30 second break. Here's a three ball from Ben Christie. Ooh. 6 11 junior from Adelaide, Australia. Spent the previous two years at Incarnate Word. He's averaging eight points a game, but shooting 38% from distance, and the Highlanders jump in front. And another scoreless drought for Hawaii here being experienced already. Over three and a half minutes, but it is over as McCoy goes off glass and one. So the three by the big fella, Ben Gristy, gave Riverside the lead, but only for a brief moment. Bounced from one doctor to the next. Did they even send my lab work? Wait. Was I supposed to bring that? Then there's the forms, the bills, the not a bills, the. Press forward and repeat these options. Healthcare can get a whole lot easier when your medical records, care, and coverage are in one place. At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together for all that is you. You're watching Spectrum Sports. This is a story of first downs and second chances. I wanted to keep playing, but my feet hurt. You'd think all those big league experts could have helped. You have access to anything, but none of it worked. His football career ended, but his plantar fasciitis pain didn't. Till he found the Good Feet store. I got fitted for my arch supports. Let me tell you something. They work. Now, he recommends Good Feet to... Anybody. If you move, go to the Good Feet store. See for yourself with a free arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. This evening, the students of Kapa'ahula Hawaii 
present a selection of ancient classical Hawaiian dances. Enjoy a performance from legendary Kumuhula, John R. Kahai Topolinski, and his Halau, Kapahula Hawaii, on the next PBS Hawaii Classics, Wednesday, January 24th at 7.30 p.m. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Long's Drugs. 3.35 to 1. That's the assist to turnover ratio for Riverside. Freshman guard Barrington Hargress. 67 assists to 20 turnovers as a total. Best in the Big West Conference and 15th in the NCAA. In fact, second among all freshmen across the country. This is a Riverside team that actually leads the Big West Conference and is top 10 nationally in fewest overall turnovers per game, but Hawaii has forced four Highlander turnovers already in this one. Yeah, I asked you during the break, how do we get .35 assists? Well, so you take the 67 <laughs> assists, and then you divide it <laughs> I by the number of games, just, and then the turnovers, just, and then you go down to, to the lowest common denominator. Isn't it three to one? Three assists <laughs> to one turnover, because I haven't seen the ball cut in thirds or something to get me. I don't know. Yeah, you're, you're reading a little too far into it. Analytics, you know, it's just made things a lot more complicated. Well, here is Hargress being guarded by Juan Munoz. Yeah, may have gotten away with one. Under 10 to shoot on this possession. It's Owens going over McCoy, soft touch. Owens got a big body. That's a good battle, those two going at each other. I'm gonna watch that, that should be fun. In his second year with Riverside, transferred from Montana, where he spent three seasons. Here's McCoy. Munoz for three, yes! One, one. High school teammates feeling each other. Good assist, good shot. And a couple of North Carolinians there connecting the assist to the three. And the first made three here of this game for Hawaii. Munoz shooting 40% from out there. Hargress turning the corner. Hargress just went by it, and Juan's got to do the job on the defensive end, not, not rely just on that three-point jump shot. You can't give up baseline. You see Riverside, among their victories in conference play, a win against UC Santa Barbara by a couple of points, and Hargress went bananas in that one. 26 points in that game back on December 30th. Both teams shooting 58% at the moment, and Munoz helping that percentage right here from the corner. Yeah, one knocking down that three-point shot, and then he comes back on the defensive end and gives up that baseline. You cannot do that, although it was three for two. So it's one better than Look at you. Yeah, my math is working, man. I tell we're, you. we're seeing it click in real time. Here's there Munoz for three. Rebound corralled by Will Tattersall, one of the veteran players on this squad in his fourth year with the program. A little over 10 minutes into this first frame, one point contest. Hargress leans in on Coleman and finishes with the left. Nice move. Nice drive. Coleman beat on the baseline again. Defensively, Rainbow Warriors have to take responsibility. Move your feet defensively, get positioning, anticipate. Munoz pumps by the defender and then goes all the way to the 10. Excellent job by Juan, feeling the game. Also, great job by Morset, shielding the basket away from uh, Juan Munoz. Five points for Juan. These two teams trade in buckets and trade in the lead. Three ball by Christie. That went a little long. And BD able to chase down the board. Oh, they go over the top to Moore with the flush. I love it. I love it. Morset doesn't shoot a lay in. He flushes it. A slight flush, but in that flush, nonetheless. What? Well, now 9 of 15 from the field. They're shooting 60%. And looking to come in with a couple of subs here at the next dead ball. Hargress trying to take Munoz off the dribble. Left it short. The ball caroms out of bounds. It belongs to the Rainbow Warriors. 
Hargris goes hard to the basket, uses that left hand off the glass, and then Juan Munoz says, I can do it too. Great job by Morissette setting the screen, a pick to give him that free lane. This has been a good ball game. Guys are competing. And check this out, Akira Jacobs making Ooh. an early entrance. This is a real early entrance. Akira, maybe that's one of the changes that Coach Gennad is uh, trying to see would help this team get off uh, the losing track. The 6'9 freshman from Yokohama, Japan. Munoz off the screen. He's a little off the mark. The two freshmen going against each other. Here they go. And that bounce pass off the mark for Gristy. Really an interesting matchup there, Caleb Smith and Akira Jacobs tussling on that possession. Yeah, Riverside trying to put a little full court pressure and shorten the, the shot clock for the Rainbow Warriors. Thoughts on the pace, what we've seen here a little over 12 minutes in. I like it. This is a 75-80 point game pace. To play into the advantage of either team, Jacobs for three, okay. Akira, Akira. All of a sudden, Hawaii, the fan base in Hawaii gonna go crazy. Timeout Riverside, Akira Jacobs playing in his 11th game, had five points all season, knocks down a triple, seven straight for the Bows. There's nothing I love more than being a farmer. Every day I get to care for my sheep and feel connected to the land. Believe it or not, I think it makes me better at my other job, managing Bank of Hawaii's branches in Hilo. Because like farming, Banking is all about caring for the needs of customers and businesses in our local community so they can grow and reach their fullest potential. I'm Steven Sylvester, and I'm proud to work for a company that gave a farmer like me the chance to make a difference in my community. Oh, just call Steve's. You've seen our trucks everywhere, and there's a reason why. Steve's Plumbing and AC is always on, offering same-day service from the island's most trusted team. Your Ohana can expect a plumber that's clean, prompt, and always with aloha. Get smart, save as much as $5,000 on a solar water heating system. Enjoy the cost savings while saving the environment. Get your free estimate today. Steve's Plumbing and AC Service. Just call Steve's. Starting the new year off on the right foot isn't always easy. Luckily, my longs has everything I need. Make longs a part of your day. Welcome back. This was prior to the timeout, Artie. For what, you're taking advantage of the more sec size. Yeah, more sec down low and get the ball into the big fella. I like the fact that he caught it, didn't bring it down, didn't dribble it. He just went up and had a slight flush. It wasn't one to tear the rim down, but it didn't have to be. Yeah, Hawaii has struggled a little bit offensively here over the last eight games. Uh, through their 7-1 and one start to the season, they were averaging almost 80 points a game. They were shooting nearly 50% from the field as a team and almost 39% from outside the three-point line. Uh, that has dropped over the last eight games to 63 points a game, just under 40% from the field and 27 from three, but here they are. 59% so far in this one, 10 of 17 in a near steal there by McClanahan. And it is going to be a turnover. Yep, turnover of travel. Travel Caleb, ball against Caleb Smith. Smith has done it a couple of times. Kara Jacobs challenged, helped out Noel Coleman. And then you see on this play earlier before that, Rainbow Warriors going to the ground, so it's like dogs won the bone, they went for it. So an interesting lineup, we haven't seen much of this combination. As Arangana did say after the Irvine game, hey look, I'm gonna try some different things here. This is one of them with both Jacobs and Rapp on the floor. And as that one last touched out of bounds by Riverside. Oh, 
when you're trying to find answers, you're willing to try just about anything, right? Yeah, you have to go with whatever. Five seconds to shoot. Coleman looking to give it up. The Silva's got to get it up. He does. And the rebound off to Smith. No, number one, as a team, you've got to talk about how many seconds there are in the shot clock when the ball is in bounds. Hargris slipped, but fortunately Kyle Owens was there. Riverside looking for its first points in over three minutes. How about that juke there by Isaiah Moses? Sent a couple of white shirts flying oh, by, but a foul will go against Bernardo Da Silva. That's his first. Not a lot of fouls here so far, just five personal fouls called in this half. Well, I like with, the, with this officiating crew, I like the way they call games because they're allowing the players to determine things and letting the low body contact go, but they're keeping it under control. But it's, this is much better basketball. Off balance shot goes for Pickens. Competitive ball game here through the first 14. Riverside shooting 56% from the field, so some efficiency on both sides. Here's McClanahan. Now Beattie to the baseline, and that one just dribbles off the iron. I like the shot, though. Short game, mid-range game, kiss the glass. Pickens working against Rapp, muscles it up, and it's Rapp who gets the loose basketball. Rapp in the lane. Isaiah Moses, still scoreless, team's leading point getter, 0 for 2 from the field. Trying to change that here, but he can't, it rims out. McClanahan off the Hezzy, here's Jacobs again. Gets the bounce! Akira says, this is my home. This is my home court. I know these rims. Akira was getting ready to be subbed out by uh, Justin McCoy and Iran Ganache said, no, 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 go back down, Justin, have a seat. So two threes here in this first half for Akira Jacobs as Da Silva's gonna pick up the foul there. Kyle Owens found himself open underneath, but uh, sometimes it helps when the rim has the aloha spirit. No question. Some aloha for Akira. But how about the young man already Putting together a night where he has accumulated more points than he had all, all season, season coming yep. in. He's the leading scorer on the team right now. At least he's tied with Javon McCann, but you can say it. He's leading scorer. That's right. For the Rainbow Warriors. Meanwhile, well, here's Kyle Owens, 6'8 grad student from Calabasas, California. 66% free throw shooter goes long there. Season was cut short by injury last year, played in just 20 games. And Morsek coming back in for De Silva, who now has to sit for a moment with two fouls. Yeah, he'll sit for the rest of this half, I'm sure. I mentioned the season that Riverside had last year, 22 and 12, finished third in the Big West at 14 and six. The double digit league victories for the first time ever in the Big West. Lost in the semifinals to Santa Barbara by five. And also lost 67% of their scoring from last year's roster. So it was a uh, puzzle that needed to be put together again for Mike Magpio. And he says, hey, look, we show signs. We have flashes. There are nights where we look like a really good basketball team. But the consistency is an issue. They're, they're a work in progress, but they play hard. McClanahan, and he's going to get fouled by Pickens. So an aggressive Jovan McClanahan here so far in this one, Artie, as Pickens picks up his first. Yeah, I thought Jovan missed an opportunity to drop a dime off to a teammate on that one, but he still gets to the line, so that's what you really want. And so the reaction there by Magpio, I don't think he loved the call. That call? Yeah. McClanahan, meanwhile, shooting 62% from the free throw line. 
knocks it down. And Justin McCoy will come in, and Akira Jacobs will receive a strong ovation. Good minutes from the freshman. He's so young, he's not even sure what just happened, but <laughs> let it be, because he's a player. I like him, I think he's gonna be really good. I think it's gonna, his future is extremely bright. So Hawaii by eight. Largest lead of this first half for the Bulls. Caleb Smith trying to back in on McCoy. Now he'll try a three, and he'll hit it. Nice Caleb shot. Smith has knocked down a couple from out there. Riverside's kind of hanging around here. Yeah, they are. McCoy tried to drop it off to sack that one. A little overcooked. And so it'll be Riverside basketball on the other side of this media timeout. Behold my Jackrabs. 100% all white meat grilled or crispy chicken with lettuce, cheese and sauces, and a warm tortilla for just three bucks. And they're under 400 calories. So if your goal this year was to save money and eat healthy-ish, we got you. Let's go! It's your journey. Own every mile in an available H-Track all-wheel drive Hyundai Let's SUV. Go. Get 0% APR or up to 1,500 bonus cash on the 2024 Hyundai Tucson. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealers. Bounced from one doctor to the next. Did they even send my lab work? Wait, was I supposed to bring that? Then there's the forms, the bills, the not a bills, the... Press forward and repeat the Healthcare can get a whole lot easier when your medical records, care, and coverage are in one place. At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together for all that is you. My double bonus jack combo gives you double the seasoned beef and double the cheese. Let's see that again. Double beef, double cheese, two ads for the price of one. Not bad. Welcome back. Well, the Rainbow Wahine basketball team unbeaten in conference play no more after falling to UC Riverside on the road today, 66 to 58. And the Wahine will be coming back home to take on Long Beach State in our next telecast, which will be Thursday at 6.30 uh, p.m. is when the coverage will begin right here on Spectrum Sports. Yeah, tough, uh, tough loss to the Wahine, but they've got a nice start to their season. They've got to come home now and definitely defend home court. And that's exactly what Aron Ganat is hoping his team is able to do here against Riverside and end a home losing streak of four games. The bench points impressively in favor of Hawaii, and a lot of that obviously behind the two threes by Akira Jacobs. Yeah, and the amazing thing, Hawaii is five for five from the free throw line. Hawaii well, zoning up here on this possession, out of the timeout. Open three for Pickens, splash. Just like that, it's a two-point ball game. Hawaii well, three of seven from outside the property line. UC Riverside four of seven. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Beatty dribbling into trouble, and he lost it out of bounds. He, did, he stepped on the out of bounds line. And now Noel Coleman will check in. Noel Coleman, this is now becoming a little bit of a thing here, Artie. Scoreless in the last game, 0 for 2 here so far without a point in this first half. Yeah, and he's not had a lot of looks, but he's got to create some looks for himself, and they've got to get something out of the offense as well. Because you need Noel Coleman, right? I mean, Absolutely. this is a guy who's led your team in scoring each of the last two years and is doing so again this season. Yeah, you don't score a 1,000 points in <laughs> college if you can't score. So this is the time. See, in this transition, I'd like to see Noel get the ball and then attack. 
Riverside on a 6-0 run. McClanahan, a lot of dribbling here on this possession. Then a tough fade away. Up to just short. So Riverside again, a chance to tie or take the lead. And what they've been able to do is play this game at a certain pace that hasn't really allowed this crowd to get overly involved. Yep. Smith. Um, that one will be last touched by Hawaii. They're going to say that it was partially blocked. Caleb Smith saying, of course it was blocked. You think I'd put up an air ball from that close? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Looked maybe like maybe more of a foul than a block, but five seconds to shoot. If that one didn't hit the rim. Hargress. That was a good contest there by Munoz. Oh, Munoz being harassed by Hargress, who ultimately picks up the reach in foul. <laughs> you see his expression. Yeah, he's like, I got all balled in. No way that was a foul. It is his yeah. second, so he'll go back to the bench, and Isaiah Moses is coming in. As a player, you go up to the referee and say, man, don't bail him out of that. Ten seconds to shoot. Munoz rubbing off the sex screen, launches the three, and drills it. That ends a scoreless drought of about three minutes. Juan Munoz starting to find his groove. How pure is his shot? It's effortless. Yeah, when it goes through the net, it almost kind of goes back up the yeah. net. It's uh, as feathery as jump shots come. And look at him trying to harass Moses defensively. Moses over sec was definitely bothered on that shot. Here's Coleman clearing it. Rap, what a pass to sec for the punch. Good assist by Rap. Nice start of the play by Coleman advancing the ball to a teammate that was ahead. About an eight second differential between the clocks here. And a good burst by the Bows to close this first half. Three ball Tattersall answers. Ooh. It changes things, but Hawaii will get the last possession. And they're going to signal a timeout to try to draw something up here. 14.1 seconds left on the first half clock. Juan Munoz able to just off the dribble flick it in. And then Ryan Rapp, the no look. No look. Yeah, Ryan Rapp. Ryan Rapp is, he's starting for the third or fourth game, and now all of a sudden he's hes pulling out all tricks. You know, he's, he's going no look. He's, okay, Ryan, we feel you. In his second year with Hawaii. Played three years at Washington State and appeared in 54 career games there. A four-time Washington State scholar athlete, however, and he is seeking his master's in finance here at the University of Hawaii. I think he's a four-time scholar athlete at Washington State, three years, and he's getting his master's or PhD here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's been in school for a while. Now. I mean, that's the modern-day college athlete here nowadays, Artie. Good for him. His dad, Tim, was an All-American basketball player at UC San Diego, part yeah. of the UCSD Hall of Fame, and his aunt, Jess Foley, uh, 2006 WNBA draft pick out of Duke. And his, his grandfather, his grandfather coached Iran Ganat. Unbelievable. There you go. The connections are deep. Has a 6'10 brother yeah. who uh, I think is reportedly strongly considering also making his way uh, out to Hawaii for his college career. Yeah. Probably doesn't hurt that he sees uh, his bro Ryan doing some things out there. Yeah. Absolutely. Here's Ni Olabade on the floor now for UC Riverside. 
And it's going to be a foul on De Silva trying to set the screen, or is it on Munoz? No, I think it's on Juan Munoz. And that is fortunate because for De Silva, that would have been his third. Yeah, watch, the, watch his right arm with the push off now. Yep. Once, once, he, once he extended the arm, pushed him, put uh, Moses into De Silva, no question the foul was going to be called. So again, fortunate. Could have been number three for Bernardo. Instead, even with his two fouls, they're going to sit him on the bench. Don't want to take a chance here at him picking up a third. More sec will come in for this defensive possession. Seven seconds to go here before the break. You get a shot off. Oh, my Hargress goodness. blows by everybody and draws the foul, the bruise and the bucket for Barrington Hargress. Wow. That was just a lack of communication by the Rainbow Warriors on the defensive side. Watch this now. McClanahan thinks he has help. Morsec is not there until the last minute, and it's too late when he is there. So Hargris with eight points, chance at a three-point play here, and a chance to cut this deficit down to one before halftime. The officials are going to take a look at this. I think they want to make sure that they have the appropriate amount of time on the clock. Hargress paying a toll for that bucket as Morsec came in and sort of cleaned him out. Harrington Hargress, he's been impressive. Yeah, he has. And with the made free throw, it will be a one-point ball game. And he does make it. 68% free throw shooter on the year. Both teams shooting five free throws in this first half. Here is McClanahan, late clock, Joe Vaughn. Not this time. Riverside closes the first 20 minutes on a 6-0 run, and it is Hawaii by a digit here going into the locker room. Let's send it over to Scott Robbs. Coach, one point game at the break. It seemed to be a half of flows for both sides. Yeah, I think I'm proud of our offensive flow, the sharing of the ball. Justin McCoy's putting on a clinic on getting a two feet in the paint. Our fours gave us a lift. Uh, I don't know where our defense went. We need to have it all at the same time. So uh, some adjustments in the second half. Key for that second half for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's the key? Yeah. Well, continue to flow and get our defense back. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Kanoa. Some good shooting from both teams in that first half. Riverside shoots 50%, Hawaii 54%. And we've got a ball game here in the Big West. Corner Crew will take over after this. Welcome back here to the Pizza Hut Halftime Statistics. Uh, some quality shooting, some pretty efficient numbers for both teams, but Hawaii Big edge off the bench, Artie. Well, the bench has been strong for the Rainbow Warriors. When you look at the statistics, 50% for uh, Riverside, 54 for the Rainbow Warriors. Three-point field goals are pretty even. It's an even ball game, and that's why it's a one-point ball game. The Rainbow Warriors have to come out now. The problem that I saw at the end of that first half is that Hawaii did not finish the last so many seconds of the half, and that's been something that has had been a problem for them. We don't want to have this game end up like that where it's the last minute and they have to make a play because they, I don't know if they have that belief system yet. Yeah, there have been a couple of things that have somewhat haunted this team. Uh, the occasional scoring drought, which has happened in multitude the last couple of games. And like you said, finishing halves strong. Uh, during halftime, uh, we had the University of Hawaii eSports team uh, being honored, nationally ranked. Yes. And uh, certainly uh, one of the uh, programs at the forefront of this tectonic shift that we are seeing uh, with nice, relation nice to nice yeah hoodies. the consideration of esports as a true sports program. Well, there they are. Yeah. What was the what was your favorite video game of all time, Artie? Are you really asking me yeah. that? Uh, we're, we're going with Pong or um, <laughs> no? I'm just kidding. But, you know. To be quite honest with you, have you never played a video game I've never, in your life? I've never played a video game. You never just and, wandered and, into an arcade and, and played like Pac-Man okay, no, or something. No, no. I, that wasn't something that ever interested no me. No kidding. No kidding. You know they have basketball like, video no, games too. I never, no, I never, I never did it. I mean, it's just not my cup of tea. That's just like you know the uh, that one movie, that one series of movies. 
the, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm <laughs> the, trying to follow you. Yeah. The, the, the one that you love, you guys love that, that uh, series of movies that came out that I've never seen. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, let's get back to the game. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Well, second half action underway. It'll come to It'll you. It'll come to me. Yes, it will. Will the game come to Hawaii or Riverside here in the second half? It's going to be a foul on Bernardo da Silva just 18 seconds in. And that's going to be his third. Like Harry Ruliadef getting ready to check in. So likely to replace the silver with the three fouls, but going with Ruliadef as opposed to more sec here at this point. Meanwhile, the hook shot dances and pops out for Kyle Owens, but Riverside another stab at it. This time Owens for three. That doesn't go. And Noel Coleman extends for the board. And De Silva had the defender on his back, did not get the feed. You mentioned the closing of halves, the end of that game against UC Irvine the other night, Artie. Uh, Hawaii had just two made field goals over the last nine minutes. Yeah, it wasn't really a efficient play on the offensive end. More, I mean, uh, Bernardo Da Silva is going to have to go take a seat now, and Harry Ruliadep coming in the ball game. Meanwhile, four seconds on this possession remaining. And they need to recognize that someone needs to communicate four seconds on the shot clock now. And they're going to get it into Ruliadep. He's got to go. Finds Coleman. And it's going to be a foul. Just before the horn, a blocked shot. And so they're going to actually check to see if the shot clock expired before the foul. If it did, it would be a shot clock violation. No foul. And it would be Riverside basketball. If not, then this could be big because it could mean Noel Coleman going to the free throw line to try to break the ice here. I think the foul occurred before the violation myself. Let's look at it one more time. Good camera angle here. Yeah, I think it's clear it's going to be before the clock uh, yeah, expired. Can't really tell via the replay, obviously, without the audio as to exactly when the whistle came. But I think presumably... Uh, it did come before well, I would the hope clock they, hit zero. I would hope they wouldn't blow the whistle <laughs> before it hit zero. I mean, come on, look at it again here now. The contact goes. Oh, oh. Yeah, let's see, was it? Yeah, see the, take a look at the official top of your screen. Okay, does I he blow it before the, the whistle? whistle. Before it was... Oh, oh, that's ooh, a tough that's one. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> it might It is have when the official blows blew the, the whistle. Yeah. And, and his hand looked like it went up after the clock was at zero. Hmm. Yeah, that might be a little more interesting than no, what we were yeah. anticipating. Oh, it's gone two shots. All right, we're going to try to uh, listen in here uh, to when this whistle exactly came on that sequence. Yeah. It was, uh, so it was before the horn, yeah. uh, and sometimes it's hard as well when you're trying to work the uh, clocks on screen via the broadcast uh, to know whether or not those are precisely accurate. But uh, if you go via the audio, the whistle did come before the horn, and I think that uh, that uh, certainly is uh, reason for the officials to further feel justified sending Noel Coleman to the free throw line. He missed the first, and you can see the, the brain Oh, yeah. Just working right now. His head's spinning a little bit. Somebody needs to go smack him. He needs to get off the schneid, and, and he does. does. Good job, Noel. Went scoreless the other night. Was scoreless until that free throw right there, and Hawaii leads by two. Hawaii with some extended pressure after that mate. Riverside may not be a team to go press because they are quick. Yeah, that's Barrington Hargress. Epitomizes that quickness you're referring to. Jovan McClanahan picking up a foul. 
And they're going to say that this was in the act. So Hargress goes to the line. Had nine first half points. Go along with a couple of assists. No turnovers. We showed you that graphic. Assist to turnover ratio, pretty impeccable for a guy who is just a redshirt freshman. That must be his dad right there, huh? I was in the stands. He had a jersey on, looked like him. Pop made the trip. I'm sure that's his dad. Well, he goes there two he for is. Two hey, the that's, a, that's his dad. That's got to be his dad. <laughs> nice. If it is his pops, his pops is uh, enjoying that Hargris, first player on the floor to hit double figures. He's got 11. Backdoor cut by Coleman. May have gotten away with a charge there. Here's Rapp on the drive. And that pass by McClanahan off the mark goes out of bounds. And it is a turnover, Hawaii's sixth of the game. Both teams have turned it over six times. Yeah, it's unfortunate because uh, Javon had drew the defense and was trying to kick it back out to, uh, to Noel. Noel just moved to the left a couple steps further. Well, we are tied here at 36. <laughs> Owens, tough shot, and he gets it to go over Rulia Depp. And again, the way Riverside's been playing, right, of just hanging around, some lengthy possessions that go pretty down uh, deep into the clock. Uh, they haven't allowed this crowd to really absorb things. There were a couple of bursts, certainly, when Akira Jacobs hit the pair of threes. But they're looking for a reason to get going. That shot won't do it as Rap rims out from three. Yeah, that's a shot that Rap has to hit. And Javon, I mean, uh, Noel Coleman, Gave up a good look, thinking he gave a teammate a better look. And that pass deflected out of bounds, stays here. Meanwhile, going back to the first half, Riverside on a 10-1 run. Look at this now. This is just big boy basketball. Owens. Over the right shoulder. And that's where Harry Rulidef has got to do a better job, is on the post defense. And he understands that he's got to work at it. Ooh, nice oh, move. what a spin move. Isaiah Moses showing why he was an All-American at the JUCO level at College of Southern Idaho. He is from Anchorage, Alaska. And who played for College of Southern Idaho? Well, there have been several, but yeah. uh, Al Davis, the one best. of the all-time greats. One of the best ever. Another couple that played at Hawaii after attending College of Southern Idaho, Justin Thomas. Amaro Lotto, recent member of the Hawaii roster. Coleman, the up and under no, but Rapp was Johnny on the spot and was able to keep that play alive, and he will go to the free throw line. Let's watch this move right here. This is Moses coming here. Woo, that's quick. That's that's just real good offense right there. Pardon the... Uh, Sea of defenders there, Moses, on that drive. And then Ryan Rapp staying with it, just kind of getting some of those hustle plays yeah, and almost literal is. hustle points. He is he is the, the ever-ready battery, the bunny. He's, he's energy. He always gives you maximum effort. And now Morsek will check in, replacing Ruliadev as Rapp hit the free throw. That's now two fouls called that led to free throws for Hawaii in this second half with one second or less remaining on the shot clock. Yeah. So they're taking their time to get shots off. And Rapp goes one of two, just like Holman did, and then the pass by McCoy trying to save it out of the corner is turned over. Riverside by three. You kind of get the feeling this is a bit of a danger zone here for Hawaii. Yeah. Riverside is starting to play with a little more energy. Oh, but it's gonna be a foul against Gristy on the screen. <laughs> This is, this is a critical time in this ball game. Some, which one of these teams is gonna take over and get a little run going. There's McClanahan, gonna rub off that set screen. And they're gonna get it into sec. Six seconds to shoot. 
crowd urging him on, and he draws the foul. It'll go against Gristy again. And that's his second. More sec free throws on the other side of this timeout. Hey, can I get a Virginia? A what? Morning, King. Hi. Hi, Kim, please. Me? Oui. 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 The green one? Ah. Hakanen? Yes. Being Hawaii's best bank has been our goal since we were Hawaii's first bank. But being first was just the beginning of a bigger journey, a deeper commitment. One first leading to another is how we set the standard for an industry and help turn trial runs into traditions. Because being first once just makes you the oldest. Doing it every day is what makes you the best. Bank on the best. First Hawaiian Bank. It all starts with yes. Oh, just call Steve's. You've seen our trucks everywhere, and there's a reason why. Steve's Plumbing and AC is always on, offering same-day service from the island's most trusted team. Your Ohana can expect a plumber that's clean, prompt, and always with aloha. Your smart save as much as $5,000 on a solar water heating system. Enjoy the cost savings while saving the environment. Get your free estimate today. Steve's Plumbing and AC service. Just call Steve's. Welcome back, Riverside. Outscoring Hawaii 6-2 here in this second half, but Morsec gonna get a chance from the free throw line to try to cut into this early second half deficit. But uh, what do you think about what Hawaii has brought uh, to the floor out of the locker room? Again, this hasn't necessarily been a style of game that has given the crowd the prompt to get overly involved. What do you make of what we're seeing here right now? Well, to be quite honest with you, I like the way Hawaii came out to start the ball game better than I like how they've come out to start the second half. I don't think that they're playing. I think R the Riverside up their ante, up their game. Rainbow Warriors didn't do that same thing coming out of the locker room, but it's only in the first four minutes of the second half. There's 16 minutes to play in this ball game. It's time for the Rainbow Warriors to take it up a notch on the defensive end and in their offensive execution. There's got to be some movement and some motion. You saw the numbers for Sec against UC Irvine the other night. Uh, was hindered by foul trouble. Uh, here in this ball game, he's got six points. He hasn't missed a shot yet. Yeah, he looks good. He shot those free throws real well. A couple of field goals. And here is Gristy off the mark from three. And Hawaii now a chance to leapfrog ahead. Looking like there's a little bit of confusion or at least disconnection as to how to get into the offense. It's Caleb Smith picking up the foul. This is now five team fouls for Riverside in this second half. And the officials are going to cool things down a little bit between Caleb Smith and Justin McCoy. Now Jalon Martinez 6'11", junior from Vallejo, California, checks in. And Coleman gets free. And that's his first made field goal in some time. And Hawaii in front. Oh boy, that has to feel good for Noel. Here's Hargress. Curling to the rim, bothered by Coleman, goes off the side of the backboard and out of bounds. Hawaii basketball. And that gets a little bit of an ovation from the fans. They like the effort of Coleman at both ends on that sequence. So Hargress gets a breather, Pickens back in the game. Oof. And again, the extended pressure here from the Highlanders. This is where you gotta pass the basketball and move. Guys have to move. Skip pass goes to Coleman. Off the jab step. 
He finds Ryan Rapp, who can't hit. That was a good attack by Cole Coleman. A good outlet pass to Rapp for the three. Oh, tough finish there by Pickens with more sec and his arm extended in his way. This is smart for Riverside. They put pressure on the Rainbow Warriors in the backcourt, take some time off of the shot clock, and then Hawaii has much less time to get into anything offensively. Yeah, Mike Magpio saying he would love to play a much faster up and down type of tempo. He says, we don't really have the experience and the personnel to do that this year. We're playing slower than what we would like as McCoy from straight on goes along with the three. But this might be working for them here in this particular matchup. Shortening the game effectively. Yep. Left corner three, Tattersall goes along with it. And McClanahan had his hands on the rebound, but his feet were on the end line. Good effort by uh, McClanahan to at least attack for the rebound. But all of a sudden, this game with Riverside is... Uh, up for grabs. The, the, yeah, it's up for grabs, and, and Riverside has upped the ante a bit. Akira, Akira hit two, two threes in the first half. Why the use a three-pointer about that now? You're saying yeah. interesting that we haven't seen him yet in the second half? Well, he didn't do anything, in my opinion, that didn't warrant great effort. Well, here's Coleman after the three, tap out. Three on two right here. McClanahan, three up. Doesn't go. It's okay. It's good transition. You got to go with it. Coleman will try. And Thank you. Hit it. Noel Coleman. That is transition basketball. That's what Hawaii needed to do. That's the type of game they need to start playing. Go up and down the floor. You don't have to worry about offense. Timeout Riverside. Call it a cathartic three for Noel Coleman. The University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum Sports. Sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. At Spectrum News, we're committed to our communities around the clock. And now, Spectrum Internet-only customers, we're bringing Spectrum OC16 and Spectrum Sports to your TVs, delivering coverage of the local sports you love. Spectrum News, now streaming exclusively for Spectrum customers. I've always had a love for anything local. Ever since I was a child visiting my grandma's lay shop, I felt a deep connection to the local shopkeepers, local artisans, the local farmers who make Hawaii so unique and so special. Today, I'm grateful to have a job helping Bank of Hawaii and its employees give back to our local communities. I'm Momia Kimsu from Bank of Hawaii, and I'm proud to help you live your happy. Tuesday, with the end of the season approaching, it's a pivotal battle for playoff positioning. Hawaii girls basketball, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. Welcome back. Let's check out tonight's Hyundai head-to-head -head stat line. We're looking at the bench points, so what, you getting some good contribution from the guys who... We're not in the starting rotation tonight. Yeah, the bench guys have come in and done a nice job, and they're going to have to continue to do a nice job. You've got Tom Beatty coming in the ball game for the Rainbow Warriors right now. More set off the bench. Both those guys coming in, they have to perform. Yeah, you got Juan Munoz, eight points. Akira Jacobs, who hit the two threes in the first half with six. More sec also with six points. So uh, just some of the off the bench contributors for Hawaii in this game, but it is a ball game, make no mistake. Mike McPyle's team, again, coming off of that home win against Cal Poly where they had five players score in double figures, yet to win a true road game this season. They are very much in it here in Manoa. This is Vladimir Salarid's day. Good defense. Learning number 13 for Riverside against McCoy, passes it back out. 
Tattersall. He was getting ridden there defensively by Beatty, who's going to pick up the foul. That's the third team foul for Hawaii. And they're going to call that in the act. And so Will Tattersall is going to go to the free throw line where he's a 69% free throw shooter. Prepped at the center of excellence in Australia. Played for the Australian U19 national team with another former Riverside teammate, Oliver Hayes Brown. And he goes one of two on that trip. So one point game under 13 to go. And Juan Munoz and Akira Jacobs getting ready to check back in. Coleman, can he get it going? Yeah, but a good look. I like that. A little more assertiveness. The last few minutes here for Noel Coleman. Progress looking to get rid of it. And Salaridze then hands it off to Tattersall. 15 seconds on this possession. Riverside looks a little like Hawaii right now on their offensive sets, and they're getting bailed out by yeah. calls by the, re by the referees. Late in the shot clock. Yeah. That time it goes against McClanahan. Looks like they flipped the script. So McClanahan and McCoy will head to the bench. And we'll see if uh, these two bench players in Munoz and Jacobs at very opposite ends of their experience spectrum. <laughs> Munoz an eighth-year senior, and Jacobs a true frosh. Uh, we'll see if they can spark the bows here. Big brother, no brother. <laughs> <laughs> Under 10 to shoot here on this possession. Now four seconds. Hargress, step back from the elbow. Ooh. Knocks it down. That was smooth. You know what? When you have that in your game, you don't worry about a shot clock running down. That mid-range game jumper is special. It helps to have a guy that can just get to a spot and create his own shot. Munoz has been doing a little bit of that, but he sets up Jacobs for three. You gotta shoot it, I like it. Come in the game, fire it up, young man. But what you know, one of six from downtown here in this second half. They were four of eight from out there in the first half, and Hargress drills a triple. Our Grizz has come in the ball game, or not come in the ball game, the last couple plays of this ball game has said, give me the ball. Yeah, he's got 16 points. And he's percolating, you can yeah, tell. He is. he is, he's feeling it. Largest lead for Riverside as Beatty draws the whistle. And so that gets us to a timeout. Creeping down in this second half. So what will be high leverage minutes? How will this Hawaii team respond? We know Barrington Hargress can respond. Why is Kalo at the heart of American Savings Bank? Because we believe in strong roots. At ASB, we're committed to investing in Hawaii, our home. American Savings Bank, voted best bank in Hawaii. Hey, let's get out and enjoy our islands. Hanging with Ohana is the best, especially when you're in the eight-passenger pilot, the perfect island ride that's rugged and ready for wherever family fun takes you. Add a new pilot to your Ohana today, part of KBB's best overall value brand for 2023. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today and tell them Henry sent you. Dedicated to the people of Hawaii. Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaii flies with us. Let's keep our money in our community, not on the continent, so more families can continue to call Hawaii home. Use any ASB Visa debit card at participating businesses and save. American Savings Bank. Voted best bank in Hawaii. Welcome back. Rainbow Wahine basketball playing host to UC San Diego. That's coming up January 20th. That's next Saturday, 6.30 p.m. is when our coverage begins on Spectrum Sports. So here we go, Artie. It's Riverside by four, 11.02 left to play. Uh, and this is when perhaps 
a team that is struggling to win basketball games like what Hawaii is experiencing right now. This is when the wheels start to turn a little bit and your mind starts to play some tricks on you. How do they ward those feelings of not this again? How do they ward that off? Well, they need to remember how it feels when they, they allow things to get away from them and not want to have that feeling anymore. And they have to just say, if it's up to me, every player that's on the court right now has to say, if it's up to me to make an extra play, to, to get a loose ball, to grab a big rebound, to make a defensive stop, or to hit a key shot, I'm going to do it. And if you don't want to be that guy, don't come on the court. Stay on the bench. Hawaii looking for its first point. And they get it in 2 minutes and 22 seconds, delivered by the freshman Tom Beatty. And that ends a 6-0 Riverside run. Bernardo De Silva back in the ball game. Playing with three fouls. As Beatty goes one of two from the line. So an interesting lineup here. You have Munoz, Coleman, Jacobs, Beatty, and De Silva. In the zone. Oh, that's real easy right there. Salaridze got cut off there by Bernardo. Skip pass. Now the three ball by Smith. And the long rebound. Munoz hits the deck. Coleman, as the bodies were collapsing, able to come out of there with it. The zone was effective that time. Riverside didn't attack. Settled for a long-range shot. And didn't knock it down. We've seen that from Hawaii. On more than just a few occasions, right? Out of a timeout, if it's the opposing team's possession, they'll come out in that zone. Four seconds to shoot. Munoz pass picked off. Salaridze leading the break. And then that pass gets picked off by Coleman. One on one with Pickens. Coleman blocked but fouled. Noel Coleman trying to put his imprint and his stamp on this ball game the last few moments. Doing it on both ends of the floor. That's the seventh team foul for Riverside. So Hawaii now in the one and one bonus, but this is a two shot trip to the line here for Coleman as he was fouled in the act. And he knocks down the first. Noel Coleman trying to gain some traction again here. Has seven points on two of five shooting. He's two of three from the line. And he goes two for two. One point game, one second under 10 minutes to play. And some superficial extended pressure from Hawaii. But Riverside has done this. They have been able to, at times, just take the air out of the ball a little bit. Hawaii back in that zone. Tattersall thought about it. Drive by Smith, drew the contact, no whistle. And Coleman there to retrieve the carom. Cross-court pass picked off by Pickens. Drives down the lane, that got taken away, but a whistle comes and a foul will go against the Rainbow Warriors. Things a little scattered and squirrely here at both ends for either side. And Aram Ganat looking for an explanation. Akira Jacobs picking up the foul. Tough, it could have gone on either player. Remember, Aram Ganat picked up a technical foul the other night against Irvine. Yeah, he picked it up trying to inspire his team. Hargress puts it on the deck, takes Ooh. it to the hoop, Ooh. up, in, and one. That was that was a man's move right there. That was aggressive, that was strong, that was with purpose. Coleman picks Watch up the this. foul. This guy has Watch a this. burst. This is quick. He beats Javon. Noel comes over and tries to help out, and with the left hand, he takes the contact and completes the play with the free throw coming. Prepped at Heritage Christian School, was the Olympic League MVP and all CIF selection. Was the number 45 point guard in the class of 22. 
by ESPN. So he comes with some high marks. And he is delivering tonight 18 points. Hawaii, no field goals in about four and a half minutes now. It's one of those droughts they've been haunted by. And again, the turnover. The 11th of the game for the Bulls. You got to take care of the basketball. You have to take care of the basketball. When you run offense, you got it. Your objective is to score. And off the Pickens. Trying to take McClanahan off the dribble. McClanahan blocked it. Pickens got it back. And then his pass taken away by Beatty. Well, nice job by Javon McClanahan continuing to stay with it on the defensive end. Yeah, how about that? The 5'10 rim protector, Javon McClanahan. That one deflected out of bounds. It'll stay here with Hawaii. Ryan Rapp now coming back into the game, as is Justin McCoy. So the starting five now back out there for Hawaii with 8.17 to play. Plenty of time on the shot clock. McCoy, the hard dribble, doesn't get the roll. It's okay, I like the move by Justin McCoy. He takes it to the basket. Credit Riverside for playing good interior defense on that play. Under eight minutes to play. Well, this is when the mind starts to wonder if you're the Rainbow Warriors. Tattersall trying to work it against Rapp. He walked with it. Wave off the bucket. Timeout on the floor. Riverside leads by three. That's a good call, good travel. Pokey? Pokey. We have a local way of saying everything. Passion fit! Lily Koi. Donut. Mosara. Just like FICO, aka First Insurance Company of Hawaii, aka Crispy Global Strength on the outside, Soft Doi Local Service on the inside. Whatever you call them, gotta be the worst. Oh no. For home, auto, and business insurance, get the kind First Insurance. Let's go! You go for It's your journey. Own every mile in an available H-Track all-wheel drive Hyundai SUV. Get 0% APR or up to 1,500 bonus cash on the 2024 Hyundai Tucson. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealers. I've always had a love for anything local. Ever since I was a child visiting my grandma's lay shop, I felt a deep connection to the local shopkeepers, local artisans, the local farmers who make Hawaii so unique and so special. Today, I'm grateful to have a job helping Bank of Hawaii and its employees give back to our local communities. I'm Momia Kimsu from Bank of Hawaii, and I'm proud to help you live your happy. Well, the anatomy of a traveling violation, Artie, what yeah, do you think one, here? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a travel. And he, he's not as sure. Yeah, wherever you play basketball, that's a travel. Yeah, Mike Magpio, you could see <laughs> he just walked He wasn't away. about to argue that yeah, call. Yeah, but they were they were short steps. They weren't long yeah. steps. They were little, little tap dance. Tap dance. Dun, 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 dun. Mike Magpio was the director of operations under Kyle Smith at San Francisco. Kyle Smith, of course, former St. Mary's assistant, as was Aron Ganat. So uh, similar coaching trees shared by these two head coaches. Yeah. Kyle Smith, of course, now at Washington State. Hawaii, no field goals. Going on almost six minutes. Scoreless the last two and a half. Where's the offense going to come from? Dangerous pass, but it finds McCoy. His drive baseline gets it up to McClanahan, has to beat the clock. Doesn't get the bounce. Rebound secured by Tattersall. Once again, Hawaii allows the clock to run down, so it's a desperation. It's almost a panic shot. It's not a shot that you're getting early in the clock. It's always down the last three or four seconds. Not good. Hawaii in that zone. 
Isaiah Moses, number three, back on the floor for Riverside. They were trying to get it to him in the corner, but wrapped with the active hands. Well, you can feel the anxiety and tension here, in the right? Manner. You can read in it in the body language of the players and the coaches, but you can feel it from the fans as well. well you can. Eight seconds in the shot clock now. Riverside's got to be aware Hawaii cannot bail them out now defensively. Here's Moses. Quick hands by McClanahan. Moses ran out of time. So Jovan McClanahan able to disrupt things, and then Moses looks to be grabbing at that left arm. May have fallen awkwardly. So both teams actually experiencing scoring droughts here. Mm -hmm. Hawaii's is 315, Riverside's 225, but the Hawaii drought without a made field goal. That has lasted over six minutes. And what has been an all too familiar type of scenario. They run Coleman along the baseline. Couple of jab moves, Coleman lays it up Noel. and in. Thank you, Noel. He did not allow the defense to dictate to him. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to make something happen. First player to double figures for Hawaii, Coleman has 10. One point contest. Extra pass, it's Pickens for three, that doesn't go. McCoy able to box out for the board. Big possession for the Rainbow Warriors right here. Coleman. Instead of going up with it, found a wrap. Now McClanahan, bounce pass underneath to Silva for the deuce. Great assist by Javon McClanahan. Excellent pass, good soft hands by Bernardo and a finish. And Hawaii back in front, five and a half to go. We're almost in that dreaded time for the Rainbow Warriors. Still in that zone. Hargress thought about it. Now puts it on the floor. Got caught underneath, gets it to Pickens. Five seconds to shoot, stripped and stolen. Extra pass, it's Coleman for three. But a great job keeping it alive by Da Silva. Now he has it back to the bucket. Coleman again. And ball goes out of bounds off of Hawaii. The crowd applauding the effort. Shots just not falling on that occasion. Hawaii now one of eight from outside the arc in this second half. Interesting statistic here as you see Isaiah Moses checking back to the game already. Uh, Moses, their top scorer and assist man in this game, been quiet, two points, one of six shooting, just one assist. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. And in Riverside, it's been a while since they've scored, four minutes, 21 seconds to be exact. So a battle of attrition here as we head down the home stretch of this one. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Now, Noel Coleman out of the ball game. Tom, Be Tom Beatty back in the game for the Rainbow Warriors. That zone has been effective for the Rainbow Warriors. Hargress trying to gap that zone. Ooh, how about that move? Ooh. Floater doesn't fall, though. But that is an unbelievable move. Hawaii trying to snap a four-game home losing streak. McCoy putting it on the deck. Five seconds to shoot up and under. Nicely done. And a timeout taken by the Rainbow Warriors here with exactly four minutes remaining. Hawaii up by three, thanks to the up and under by number one. Taco Bell is so good and so cheap. I know, right? I wonder why. What if they know we're broke? What if they're trying to be the good guys? Ah. Thanks, Taco Bell! 
Here's the dream. Never stop doing what you love. The choices you make now can keep the dream alive tomorrow. So you can live your life your way. We're here to help with a personalized approach to a healthier you. This is me. Hawaii Pacific Health. Starting the new year off on the right foot isn't always easy. Luckily, my lungs has everything I need. Make lungs a part of your day. When you work at Taco Bell, your days are flexible. Catch a break in the morning and still have time to cram for exam. Then learn on the job at Taco Bell too. Apply at tacobellhawaii.com slash careers. Welcome back. Time now for the Hawaii Honda Dealers Highlight Reel. And we're looking at Noel Coleman, who has endured some struggles offensively as of late. But he's the only player in double figures for the Bulls tonight. He's got 10, already. Yeah, it's nice to see him come alive. He's going to have to get, you know, really uh, locked in because this last four minutes is going to be critical. They need his scoring when he's on the floor, and they need him to be able to go to the free throw line and knock down free throws. Free throws will probably be critical in this stretch. Well, both teams pretty efficient shooting the ball in the first half. They were both 50% or better. Uh, in the second half, though, both teams shooting just 33%. Uh, is that because of the defense being played, or how do you measure that? Well, I just think both teams are, are struggling to knock down key shots in key situations, and it's going to come down now to who makes stops, who gets those loose balls, those 50-50 plays, and who can perform and not turn the ball over. This zone has been, paid some dividends yeah, here been, for Hawaii. It's been very effective. I'm surprised that they did not come back Riverside, I'm talking about, with Kyle Owens, because on the inside, he was scoring the basketball down low in the paint area, and against his zone, I think he would have been real effective. And another takeaway. McClanahan on the run. Finish not there. Tipped up and in. Who are they going to credit that to? Bernardo. They're, they're probably going to give it to Bernardo. They're giving oh, it to Tom, Tom Beatty. That was the announced really? scorer on the play. 8-0 Hawaii run at a most opportune time. And it is off the leg of Caleb Smith and out of bounds. And the team in Riverside that leads the conference and came into this game top 10 in the nation with fewest turnovers per game now has 13 giveaways a moment ago javon throws it up on the glass trying to get it up there and let's see who gets it tom Beatty with the right hand there okay i gave it to bernardo but i'm <laughs> i'm taking it away bernardo it's tom Beatty. there's a big follow-up there for Beatty. Five-point lead. Now Hawaii up by five with 325 to play. 322. This time it's Hawaii's opponent that's experiencing the Sahara-like desert offensive conditions. A drought of almost six minutes. Here's McCoy. Misses the bunny. Tap in, no. The second tap, no. Out of bounds it goes. It stays here with the Rainbow Warriors. And Justin McCoy... He wants it back. He says, man, how did I miss those easy buckets? Fresh 20 on the clock here for Hawaii. Inbound gets to McCoy. Ten seconds to shoot. Hand it off to Coleman. Step back three. Bodies hitting the deck. And we're gonna have a tie-up call. Possession arrow keeps it here at this end. Well, if you ask me a moment ago, what's gotta happen? You gotta get loose balls. You gotta get those 50-50 balls. You gotta do what you have to do to get a win. 
the bone was on the ground, the Rainbow Warriors had a little more dog at that point in time to go get it. I heard a player well, this kind of feels like a long distance race and the two front runners are just trying with oh. all they have left in the tank to, oh, four by, to crawl past the finish line. Four by 400, the last guy, <laughs> the anchor guy is struggling. McClanahan turns the corner, got blocked. And here's Hargress in transition. Turns on the boosters. And it'll be a foul on the drive. And that's gonna be number seven for Hawaii, I believe, which means free throws coming. One and one bonus for Barrington Hargress. Trying to end a scoreless streak of six minutes and 38 seconds. Well, there was a drought there. They... Wow, yeah. That's a long time ago without a bucket. And he misses the front end. The drought continues for the Highlanders. Unbelievable. Looking into the post area, they get it to Bernardo. And we're gonna have a tie up. This time, it goes the other way. Offense has been coming at a premium here in this second half. We see Riverside shooting 33%, one of seven from distance. Hawaii 31%, one of nine from out there. But this scoring drop for Riverside has now surpassed seven minutes in length. Well, Moses has got to show his abilities because he's a player. And here he is. They've been effectively substituting offense and defense with him going into the game for offensive possessions. Owens unable to hit. This zone bothering Riverside immensely. Yeah, it is. Minute and a half to play. Hawaii taking its time. No particular rush for the Rainbow Warriors as Aran Ganat will signal for a timeout. Buck 22 left to go. So is this the defense that Hawaii is playing that is causing Riverside to experience this scoreless run, or is it more of a lackluster offensive. No, I think it, I think you have to give credit to the Rainbow Warriors defense. Their zone has been very, very effective, and Riverside has not knocked down a key shot against the zone, so you stay in the zone until they show they can they can attack the zone and make you pay for playing, playing the zone. You play it, and Hawaii has played it very well. They, the Rainbow Warriors collectively have been in, in uh, sync. They're moving real well, their arms are up, they're challenging things and keeping Riverside perimeter. And it's not their strength. Well, Hawaii could use a change in fortunes here. Obviously, they want to get rid of the home losing streak, looking for their second win in Big West Conference play. But you have a tough road trip coming up at Long Beach on the 18th and then at UC San Diego. San How Diego. about the Tritons? Yeah, they, they're starting to play really good basketball, especially in conference here. Yeah, unbeaten so far in Big West play. Coleman with it, under 10 to shoot. Looking to get rid of the ball, finds McClanahan. Two seconds on the clock. McClanahan, tough shot. Oh, of course. See, you want, you want to butt the ball. The ball always finds Javon McClanahan's, it always finds Javon McClanahan's hand, and he doesn't mind taking the shot. He delivers when it matters most. They might be checking this to make sure that it got off in time and how much time remains on the clock. It appeared, at least in real time, that it certainly left his hand before the shot clock expired, but let's take a look. Yeah, really. Left hand goes, goes up, shoots it. Oh, yeah. 
It's one second on the clock. That one is good. Take a look at it again. It's one, it's completely one second. It's, it's still one second when it's in the air. You trying to beat the clock? That's your guy. There you go. Perhaps as good or better than anybody that's worn this uniform yeah. at making shots late in game or clock situations. You want him to have the ball. He is the maestro. He is the leader. He is the toughest guy on this Rainbow Warrior team. He's got the clutch gene running in that DNA, that's for sure. Riverside scoreless for the last eight minutes. Well, they, they're... they're uh... See, they're, they're pulling a, a rainbow warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Deep three by Moses. Doesn't go. Loose basketball. Moses comes up with it, puts up the jumper, and a whistle comes. And Mike Magpio is arguing that there should be basket interference that would make the desperation shot count. We'll see what the officials respond with there. De Silva picks up the foul, that's his fourth. We have free throws coming for Moses, but that's what Mike McPio is arguing, that there was basket interference. Moses goes and just throws up a desperation shot. Let's look at it. Oh, oh. Grab, grab the rim or grab the netting. Hmm. Meanwhile, Isaiah Moses to the line. 14 points, five assists per game. He has two in this one. Make it three. Let's take a look at... Uh, I'm not sure he quite got up to touch the rim. Definitely but touched the, the netting. Net. Well, you can't grab the netting. Correct. I mean, you can't pull the, the netting. You can pull the rim down with the net. <laughs> And so that ends the scoreless drought of 8 minutes, 16 seconds for Riverside. But they still trail by a handful here. And Nia Olavide guarding the basketball. Ryan Rapp looking to inbound. Can move side to side along the baseline after the made basket. And Hawaii forced the signal for a timeout. That is their last timeout. Well, that's a... Uh... I like the timeout, but you better make sure now you get, you get your thing set up to get the ball in the, I mean, get the basketball inbound to number one. And number two, realize they're going to try and get a steal. If they don't get a steal, they're going to look to see who's on the floor and commit a foul against the weakest free throw shooter. Five point board, ball game, 49 seconds. Hawaii should be in control, should be able to get this win, but. You have to execute in the last 49.4 seconds. Remember, this team has struggled down the stretch. This would do well to give them confidence that they can find a way to finish this. This series has been pretty even over the years with Riverside actually leading slightly 11 to 10, including actually having the advantage 5-3 here in Honolulu. Now that's a little skewed because of some of the revisionist history uh, that has taken place with some NCAA violations and wins that were vacated, all of that. But uh, Riverside won a very dramatic 54-52 game in this building last year. Bit of an overhaul from a roster standpoint on the Highlanders' side. Uh, but they've been there, done it. And you're right, for Hawaii, this is another opportunity here. High leverage, last-minute situation. No timeouts remaining Will Iran Ganat's crew have what it takes to this time finish it off. Well, I hope they will. I mean, this would, this would be devastating if they're not able to finish this. You see Riverside preseason pick to finish seventh in the Big West. This is their 23rd year as a member of the Big West Conference. It's, it's their Jordan year. <laughs> their Jordan year. Well, <laughs> the Rainbow Warriors going to have to do the job getting the ball in bounds. They get it to Rapp. He gets it to Jovan. And a foul in the backcourt committed by Pickett. So one and one coming up here for McClanahan. Fourth foul on Pickens. And so we talked about the clutch gene for McClanahan. This is exactly where he wants to be. Yeah. Shooting some important free throws. 
in the last minute of a ball game. And he's got to do the job knocking down these free throws. 10 points, five rebounds, three assists for Jovan. Gets the friendly roll. Mm -hmm. Hawaii now as a team, 13 for 16 from the free throw line. This would make it a three possession game. And he gets the friendly shooter's touch again. So seven point differential. A 12-2 rainbow run. Tattersall trying to get into that deficit, and he does with Riverside's first made field goal in eight and a half minutes, and that cuts the deficit down to four. And so a timeout taken by Riverside, and they're not out of this yet. This thing is far from power. And with, uh, with Hawaii without a timeout, Riverside, it's kind of interesting. They call the timeout. You know, you might be helping the Rainbow Warriors to uh, get the timeout and give Hawaii a chance to set up what they want to do to get one, get ball inbounds, and two, to get their better free throw shooters on the floor. Are you playing this as a full defensive possession here, Artie, or with the four-point differential, 41 and a half seconds left, uh, is this a situation where Riverside, if they don't get an initial steal, will look to send Hawaii to the line? Well, I would, I would probably do that if I were, if I had a game plan. I would, I would try and trap the ball. I would try and force Hawaii to make a bad pass. And if they did, then I would go and, and foul the weakest free throw shooter on the team. I probably wouldn't go and foul Javon McClanahan. I probably wouldn't want to foul uh, Noel Coleman. But everybody else is free game. McCoy has been shooting free throws real well, but tonight uh, McCoy has one free throw attempt and he's made it. But if, if I'm, I'm probably putting Rap on the line or Bernardo Da Silva if I'm uh, Riverside, but initially I want to go and try and get a turnover, force a turnover, force a bad pass, keep the ball out of Javon McClanahan's hands. And you have Da Silva out there and he has sometimes had issues at the free throw line. Inbound goes to Coleman. And that pass dangerous. McClanahan walks with it. Appeared to get poked in the eye, and he is in a great deal of discomfort. But the official saying that the walk came before the contact. Move, move. You got to play it. You got to play it. Still 30-some seconds. That's an unfortunate call there from Hawaii's vantage point. Moses, the reverse, doesn't go. Bounces out of bounds and stays here. They can review this, and I think they will, to make sure that they get the call right. And again, the Rainbow Warriors have to regroup now as a team. Regroup, don't panic. You're still up by four. It's only 25 seconds to go in this game. Take care of the basketball. Well, that's going to be a tough one. Did that go off of Coleman's left hand? Or Moses' right, right hand. hand. Again, yeah. the call on the floor was Riverside basketball, so it needs to be conclusive here to overturn it. Look at once again now. Left hand. Well, right hand followed through. Left of, Coleman's hand was going from left to right. God, that's a tough one <laughs> that's because tough. that's a real tough one. That's tough. This might be a helpful angle. If it wasn't for, you know, the, net, the basket being in the, the way. Net, why, why was the net there? <laughs> Who put that net there? Again, Isaiah Moses not having his typical night going up against the top scoring defense in the conference, the Rainbow Warriors. That has not been the issue. Defense has not been the issue yeah. for Hawaii. It's been at the other end. Yeah, the other end. It's just it's execution. The offense gets stagnant because it's everybody is standing around. And you, you've got to stay active and move on the offensive end. Defensively, Hawaii has been, I think, stellar. I think they've been really good. 
especially their zone. Their zone has been very effective against a team that didn't attack the zone with any uh, confidence. The referees are struggling with this now. This is a huge call. This is a huge call. Now, do we do we make the call? Do we do we do we do it for the home team because the crowd would like it? <laughs> do we not? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. That doesn't happen. But and they, they reverse it. That's a biggie. Matt Kyle shaking his head in disagreement. And so same scenario here. Riverside, a missed opportunity after the McClanahan turnover. Now they trap him in the corner and the foul is committed immediately. And that time Riverside didn't want to foul in the first two tenths of a second. Well, it's critically important for uh, McClanahan to go to the free throw line now and knock down free throws. McClanahan four for four tonight, 62% on the season. You see the redness in that left eye where he got poked just moments ago. Adding to the degree of difficulty, perhaps. But this guy likes these situations. Well, he's, like I said, he is, he is, if you talk toughness on the Rainbow Warriors, and there are not a lot of tough, tough, tough guys, but this one, this is a tough guy right here. He'll play through, through toughness and he'll do it when he has to. So the lead is six. Two possession game here. Riverside needs a quick bucket. It'll be Caleb Smith trying to deliver it. Long rebound, no. Pickens, the board flushes it, but a whistle long before that effort. And it's gonna be a foul against McCoy. And that's gonna result in free throws for Riverside. Ninth team foul, so it remains a one-on-one -one situation. It's going to be Will Tattersall going to the line. Well, Hawaii should be in good shape if they can uh, just get the ball in bounds after these free throws. It'll be a four-point ball game if he knocks down both free throws. And with 16.5 seconds, you just have to make sure you inbound the ball and you if you're the recipient, you meet it. Now they got the ball, get it to this guy's hand that you want to shoot free throws. Riverside has to foul. Instead, the ball comes loose. Now the foul is committed. You had De Silva who was camping out at the other end. Bernardo was down there saying, I have a highlight dunk for you. <laughs> Nobody is around me. Look up the floor. McCoy almost lost that basketball. And then the foul on the arm to prevent that lead pass. And it'll be Justin McCoy to the line. Tenth team foul, so this is a two-shot trip here for McCoy to help try to seal the deal. 78% on the season. Makes it look easy. No way will stop the, the slide. And I think you credit their zone defense for having a big impact on this game. 8.7. Pickens for three. It's an air ball. Coleman has it. And this thing is over. The streak is over as Hawaii ends the four-game home losing streak. And they get their second win in Big West Conference play, 63-56. So Hawaii improves to 10 and seven overall, two and three in conference. Highlanders down to seven and 11 overall this season. They're two and four. A performance that perhaps doesn't lend itself to Hawaii solving all of its issues, oh, yeah. but when they needed it most, the defense came through and they got a much needed victory here tonight. Scott Robbs is with Aran Ganat. Congratulations, a much needed win. And on top of that, you guys were able to close out a close and very competitive game. Yeah, we said we keep beating those moments. Eventually there's a breakthrough. Six for six from the line to end. We were down and came back. A lot of lift from a lot of guys. I can't tell you enough about these kids. I mean, I know we're, we're having trouble here, there, whatever, ups and downs. You wouldn't know it every day in practice. They're the best, they're the best. 
We saw you use some different combinations tonight. We saw Tom Beatty first off the bench, and I thought Akira gave you some quality minutes, particularly in that first half. He gave us a huge lift. He shot the ball well. Look, we were playing right. We missed some open threes, uh, trying to tell our guys, stay with it, stay with it, playing right defensively. The zone helped us late. Uh, we're going to need everybody to get this done. I'm telling you, our kids are ridiculous. They're unbelievable, and our fans have stuck with us, and that's really important to us. Is this a kind of a game that maybe you can ride for a while? You got two tough ones on the road. Well, we've been close, and, and they've gotten a lot better over the course of the year. They had some new faces, so we knew it would be tough. Um, you saw them take UCLA to the wire. Uh, recently, they've had success. They're finding their identity. We knew it would be a tough game every game in league, so I'm just so happy for our guys. They, they want it. They're pleasers. I mean, this isn't a lack of effort, some of the ups and downs, and I'm happy for them to have this moment and something to build off. Enjoy it, Coach. Thank you. Got off. Thanks a lot, Scott. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the game. Barrington Hargress, 18 points, but was quiet down the home stretch of this one. Seven of 13 from the field, four rebounds, three assists. And Jovan McClanahan, uh, when it's late in the clock, seems like he feels most at home and at ease. 14 points, four of nine. Hit a few clutch free throws, five rebounds, and three assists. So a much-needed win for the Rainbow Warriors. Artie, I will uh, give you the final thought here. It was nice to see Hawaii finish this ball game. They have a lot of work still to do, but they can celebrate this. They can feel good about this. They're going on the road. They're going to have to take this feeling on the road, but they still have work to do. Javon McClanahan is clearly the leader. It was nice to see Noel Coleman get off the, and, and get some points. McCoy, Bernardo, all those guys have to contribute. It's a team that has to play team basketball and they can't just play halfway. They've got to play 100%. And huge contributions off the bench from a number of guys, including that freshman right there, Akira Jacobs, Hawaii outscoring Riverside in bench points, 23 to 11. Reason to feel Pretty good tonight well, on a Saturday you, night. You sleep a lot better That's when right. you win. I can tell you that. Oh, well, we'll take the show on the road. Uh, we will hit the road. But I uh, want to remind you, don't forget about the post-game show. The Corner Crew will break it down. But for Artie, I'm Kanoa. Until next time, aloha. Okay.